Oh, hey, how are you? All right, we just got done with your kitchen with me. Guess what? Now it's time for our kitchen with you. You've always wondered what we're up to in the HSN prep kitchen. Let's see who's there and what's going on. You don't know how excited I am that you're here because you get to meet my boo. This is my behind the scenes girl. Victoria is not only my go-to, she is my heart. And she also has the big brain on all the secrets. So I'm curious, what are you going to tell and help us all with today? Today, we're gonna learn all about knives. So where should we start? Well, there's many different types of knives, but I just want to show you the basics that you need. There's very expensive knives, there's very affordable knives, but I think these are very middle of the road and they'll do what you need them to do. So our first one is a chef's knife, also known as a French knife. So you'll use that for everything in your kitchen. And unlike other chefs, it won't call in sick. Correct. I think if you had to use one knife, it would be the chef's knife. It will do anything that you want it to do. And I think the biggest tip is to protect your fingers. Take your time, you're not on TV. Right, so you're not cutting through aluminum cans. You're right. not Definitely trying to win any race. Right, and then it can do something like a hard cheese. It could even do soft as well. So just take your time and go slow. And then it can even do something small like this little strawberry. It is definitely important to go with the flow of the knife. See, there's more than something sharp in the kitchen other than my wit. <laughs> and then we have this one, which is a bread knife. It's mostly for breads, as you could imagine. Exactly. <laughs> yes, girls, carbs are allowed. And then this is a five and a half inch Santoku. There's different size ones, but I think this one gives you the most control. And it also has the non-stick indentations, which will be important for cheeses. And things so like that. unlike French fries, that won't stick to my hips? Correct. Awesome, love that, okay. <laughs> and then our fourth one here is our serrated utility knife. Oh, now what do I use on that? This one you would use for anything that has a tougher skin, but a delicate inside. Oh. So maybe like a tomato or a citrus. Like blind dates or old boyfriends. Oh, exactly. With a serrated knife, you want to do more of like a sawing motion, like a back and forth. The different motion with this one is that it's more of a chopping or like a slicing, nice and slow and steady. The rocking motion will help you with control. And then the last one, which I think is one of the most useful knives, even though small but mighty, is the paring knife. That one you'll use for any garnishes or little things. You know, everyone wants to know, does size really matter? So I think most importantly, the right tool for the right job is a, is a tool that you're comfortable Makes using. Sense. That way, it feels good in your hand, you know what you're doing, and most importantly, you're comfortable and safe. How do I know when it's time to replace my knife? Okay. Well, if you have a knife that looks like this, you'll be able to sharpen that as long as there's no cracks or chips and the handle is still intact. This can be sharpened. A knife like this, and it is a very sharp knife right. already, but it does have a little hairline crack in it. And that can be dangerous if you're cutting something like a butternut squash or something hard. It can actually crack through the knife and then you'll have a flying knife. You don't want that. <laughs> Well, a lot of people think that a sharp knife, well, if it's sharp, I'll cut myself. Right. The opposite is actually true. If it's dull, you have that extra force and you'll cut yourself. But a sharp knife is a safe knife. There are ways to sharpen knives. You can use something like a manual sharpener. You would take it through the coarse and also the fine grates, and the coarse will take the little burrs off of the knife, and then the fine will kind of give it that perfect detail. You can use an electric knife sharpener. With this one, you can put an edge on your screwdrivers and also on your scissors. Nice, okay. And then a common misconception is that this is a sharpener. It is not, it is a honer. And what you use for honing a blade is after your knives are already sharp. You use that a couple times before each use of the knife to just give the blade the right edge. But you really need to sharpen and then hone. I'm gonna get one from a brother. My go-to in the kitchen is the mandolin. So what are some of the benefits of using the mandolin? I love using a mandolin if I need a lot of something, something to be very precise or very thin. If you want to do something like apple chips or dehydrating, a mandolin is perfect for those uses. Another benefit of using a mandolin would be that you use all of the product that you're slicing. One of the things that I like about my mandolin is I can change the thickness of the slice at any time, right? Yes. All you have to do is just adjust with this and you'll see these will come out a little thicker. Okay. Because even slicing is even cooking. And then this last one, I'll show you a French fry. Oh! 
Those are your perfect homemade french fries. Okay, hopefully you've been enjoying this and learning a lot. I know I have, but we don't all have our own private Victoria in the kitchen. I do. But at the end of the day, it's whatever works for you, whatever feels good, use it, and that's what makes a great dish.